like him to end the wars in Ukraine, Russia, Israel, and Hamas, Hezbollah, Gaza, Iran, that kind of deal. I'd like him to cut bureaucracy. I would love him to improve the economy. Some Supreme Court appointments.
simple and simplistic. Trump has said he wants that to end. He wants that to be wrapped up and finished. thing if just because the Israel you know region is for whatever reason really weird really incites people's you know irrational side the Ukraine Russia thing ah, it's a regional conflict trace some territory put some demilitarized zones in there blah 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 no big deal I guess because it's a religious conflict in a lot of ways, and you could say it's an ethnic conflict, it incites people's passions way more than Ukraine-Russia, unless you've got skin in the game in Ukraine-Russia. But, do I think that ends? I think Ukraine-Russia ends, and I think it ends pretty quickly. I would say likely within two years before the, you know, next midterm elections. I think that would be the goal, and I think it's a very achievable goal. I'd even suggest probably sooner. I would say within a year. The Ukraine-Russia thing is, you know, pretty well stamped out, and you've got an agreement, and it's done. Good. The Israel... and shrinking government, uh, shrinking government 
say it's much less achievable than ending war, as crazy as that sounds. This is probably going to be the most difficult thing Trump will be attempting to achieve in his second term. He seems to have the people around him necessary to do a good job at this. significant opposition because this is going to hit people where they live this is going to hit their you know their wallets their piggy banks in terms of you know the people who are government employees they're going to get you know you're going to get fired if you know we cut a lot of bureaucracy we shrink the government we get rid of a lot of the grift and graft yeah you're going to get hurt now to be honest you should. I mean, this is, a, this is an unfortunate thing, but it seems like you're kind of doing more harm than good, and therefore you need to go. That's a horrible thing to say, because I don't know you, but also, we gotta figure out what's best for everybody, and it does seem like, you know, a lot of those people need to find other I'm sure they'll do fine. They'll land on their feet. I'm sure they'll be fine. I'm not worried about that. I think the need to cut bureaucracy is cannot really be overstated. We need to do this, otherwise we are going to collapse in on ourselves. Like, look at, you know, every Chinese dynasty. 200 to 300 years is generally speaking about as long as a government can last when it just has ever-increasing bureaucracy with no cuts. It will eventually collapse under its own weight because the inefficiencies will be so significant that no one can get anything done anywhere. We're not quite at that point, but we're getting there. Before we get to that point, if we can cut things back, we'll be, we'll be good. That allows us another, you know, couple hundred years of growth and prosperity. So yes, so this is the thing that I want him to go all in on. I think ending war is more immediately stop dying, but the thing that he's probably going to be focusing most on is this, is cutting the bureaucracy, draining the swamp, shrinking government. This is the thing that is most vital for America's future. And I'd really like to see him achieve this. Number three, improved economy.
to make everything cheap. I think this is something that Trump can do. It's not going to happen overnight, overnight, though. That is the thing. Even if he puts all of the perfect policies in from day one, it's going to take time for those changes to trickle down and spread out throughout the economy, throughout all the sectors. So this is something that probably does take, again, a year or two to really see, maybe even four years. It might take, it might take that long. I don't think so. My guess is we are poised for a resurgence. changes, we could see it very quickly. So I would like to see that. I think it's achievable. I don't know if it's immediate, but I think this is actually much more achievable than the cutting of bureaucracy. Although cutting bureaucracy would, I think, also improve the economy. So again, focus on cutting bureaucracy. Number four, this one is something that is technically 100% achievable. There are a couple roadblocks in the sense of depending on when it happens and the makeup of the House and Senate at the time, the confirmation hearings for probably two new Supreme Court justices uh, could be a little bit dicey, but again, that depends on when it happens. The reason I have this on here is I'm not a conservative, but I think that the function of the Supreme Court and the judiciary branch in general is to be a conservative check on power, is to basically make sure that people in both the legislative and executive branch do not gain power super quickly and move super quickly on all these different is a check on that kind of power. And that check only works if the Supreme Court is conservative. It's kind of, you know, behind the times and essentially is enacting the will of the majority of the people. Their job is not to be activists or to, you know, legislate from the bench. That type of stuff is absolutely not their purview, not what they should be doing, and it leads to bad things. The fact of the matter is that, you know, we've had some really great Supreme Court decisions, the uh, ending of Chevron deference, that's fantastic. And I think there was one other one, which was, it, it escapes me, but that stuff's good. That stuff is good. It has been, you know, long overdue. And I think the fact that if we get two new appointments, we could have a generation of these kind of, you know, conservative decisions that limit the growth and power of government and curtail government overreach. Again, that really helps us out in the future. And we do need something along those lines. We need something like a generation, you know, 10, 20, 30 years of these cuts.
pros absolutely outweigh the cons. But people need to be able to see it for a long period of time. And that leads me into my last thing that I would like to see in Trump's second term. The realignment of American values. Now by realignment, I essentially mean that I would like most people in the country to be able to say, hey look, I'm American, I'm proud to be American, and to know values that that entails, the principles of America that, you know, when I was a kid, and I would say, look, the last 50, 60, you know, maybe even 100 years represented those values and principles, and the last 20 or so years have kind of been atomized, they've kind of been broken apart, they've kind of been degraded valued. They are things that I would like to see re-emphasized. see this, but this one is going to be up to all of us. But I would like to see it. I would like to see this in his second term. Now, does this mean unity? Everyone needs to come over to, you know, the Republican side. No, of course not. American values have never said that. Absolutely. Room to disagree and debate. But we should be debating the course that we think best achieves the goals, not the goals themselves. for the uh, 